Family Resource Center on Disabilities is the Region 1 Parent Training and Information Center of Illinois. You can reach us at 312-939-3513 or email us at info at frcd.org. We also encourage you to visit our website at www.frcd.org and follow us on Twitter at FRCDPTI. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page at FRCD1231 and like us on Facebook. Family Resource Center on Disabilities is not a law firm or a legal service agency. Thank you for joining Family Resource Center on Disabilities Lunch and Learn webinar, Dissecting the IEP Part 1, Understanding Present Level. This presentation will be presented by FRCD bilingual parent trainer, Sabita Pasha. This webinar is being recorded. If you have questions, feel free to raise your hand in the attendees uh, chat box, or you can type in your question under questions in the question box. Also, you can download the handouts in the handout section um, on your control panel. Okay, Zabita. Thank you, Paula. Uh, you can begin and show your screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? I can now. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much for, uh, for this opportunity to share our information with the parents and professionals and stakeholders in the community. I am Zubida Pasha, one of the parent trainer at Family Resource Center on Disabilities. And Family Resource Center on Disabilities is a parent training information center. What we do is support, empower, educate parents to be the best advocate for their children. Um, help parents to understand and navigate the IEP. And this uh, webinar, it is a great opportunity to understand your child's IEP. And if you are a professional, um, it will give you greater perspective on how the IEP components are. Today's webinar, it is about the present level of academic achievement and fun functional performance. And this component is so important and relevant in the discussion during the IEP meeting and to prepare for the IEP because the, I, the present level is the foundation of the IEP. Base it on IEP on a poorly written present level of academic achievement and functional performance, it's like building a new house on a crumbling foundation. So what does that mean? The house won't stand, you know, for a while. So for that to be said, make sure that the information in the present level will reflect your child's performance on many levels, academically, functionally, socially, and emotionally. And these are really relevant information that will drive good goals, good benchmarks, and provide the right and appropriate support for your child. So the present level, it is a component of the IEP. And the IEP stands for the Individualized Education Program that each child who has a disability that is adversely affecting their learning should have one. The IEP, it describes a required special education program that is tailored to meet the unique need of the child. The IEP should ensure the provision of free appropriate public education. And this is a huge component of IDEA, which is um, the individual with the individual disability education act which is the special education uh, law that free appropriate public education is the first principle of the law and what does that mean it is free at no expense to the parent to meet the unique need IDEA has the component the component that tailored to the children who are small from zero to three which is the early intervention program and the other component is part B, which cater from 3 to 22, and this is national. Also, the IEP should say, where are the provision of these services going to happen? And that is the least restrictive environment. All our students with disabilities, including my child, they belong to general education first and foremost. And if it does not work, then we will talk later on. There, are, there is a component of this series of webinars on least restrictive environment that specifically 
will explain the placement. So like I said, the present level is the foundation that generates the rest of the IEP and it drives the rest of the IEP because it gives us relevant information and a clear picture of the child functioning, again, on many levels and to give us all of those gaps so they can be bridged by the, by the goals. So it takes a team to do the, the present level and the, the IEP. Among those teams is the parent. The parents are equal partner in the process. And the parent's input is so important during the conversation about the present level. Certain things we see at home that are not seen in the classroom. There are many kiddos who have, for example, some mental health issues, such as anxiety. At home, we don't see certain behaviors, but the teacher are seeing those things. Do know that the present level of academic, uh, academic achievement and functional performance, it is, it is specifically for the educational environment. Let's say you are sitting at the table and you are negotiating for your child uh, services and support. And the teacher, she says, well, I see this. He's unable to start the task without prompting. He's unable to raise his hand for answering. And you say, no, when he brings his homework, he sits and he takes a break and he starts right away. I don't have to do anything. So do know that the, both settings are different. Home is sanctuary. It's very comfortable for our kids. They are used to us. We, they know they rely on us also. At school, it's a little bit different, especially in the beginning of the school year and if the environment is new to your child. So the present level provides informational basis for generating goals, objectives, support, accommodation, and services that are specifically designed to meet the unique need of your child and where this information is coming from. So if we define a problem, we are 50% halfway. There, there is an old saying, and I believe in it, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. So if we identify a problem, we for sure will brainstorm and talk about solution. The present level must include the parent input. And again, the information is so relevant. Even though the settings may be different, there are things that we see that, I am so sorry, my computer is acting up, that the, 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 the educators are not seeing. And when I say those, those two settings are different, I make sure that you negotiate the services in the educational setting. The areas identified with the CLEF are areas of need that must be addressed by annual goal, special education program and services, supplementary aid and services and support. And also, it depends on the age of the student. If the student is 14 and a half, we have to look into the transition. So to establish the foundation on which the rest of the IEP is developed, we have to identify many other aspects of the present level. We have to also take in consideration, and this is a snapshot of the present level. Look what's in it. It has the student strength, the parent educational concern, the student present level, of course, we have to make sure that it's in there, and the impact the impact of the disability. And at 14 and a half, of course, we have to describe, you know, um, the transition planning in the, in the IEP. We also have to make sure to align the student present level information with the following. The content, standard and benchmark, annual goals, supplementary aid, and secondary transition. So all of this, what you're seeing on this screen, must be aligned based on the grade level of the student and the age and on their present level. There are kids who are in high school, like mine. She is in 10th grade. She is functioning in 5th grade level comprehension. So her goal, based on her present level of 5th grade, should be aligned by a goal, by the age, by the benchmarks, and the transition because she's in high school. She has a transition plan. Also, we have to make sure how the disability is affecting the child's involvement and the progress in general education 
curriculum. I want to stop for a minute at this point about the general education curriculum. There is one curriculum in special education. Even though our children have disabilities and they call them special education children, which I don't like this jargon, there is one curriculum and our kiddos with IEP should have the same equal opportunities to access the general education curriculum through the IEP, meaning that they have to differentiate their instruction, they have to provide support, accommodation, and modification for our kids to access this general education curriculum. The present level sh should also have a detailed description of the current performance in reading and math, and this is really the foundation. And also, it sh should take in consideration the result of the initial or most recent evaluation of the student. I'm practically dissecting this page. And we make sure that the strength of the student. Here are a couple of examples of strength of students. Johnny can read. Not Johnny is cute. That is not a present level. Johnny is cute. It is not a present level, literally. That's a statement. That's a compliment. But Johnny can read a book at his level, can decode the word at his grade level. That's a present level statement. Johnny decode a present level but comprehend at um, whatever that, that level is. So that is an accurate present level. We have to make sure that we state the present level accurately and appropriately. I will continue to give examples throughout this presentation to make sure that what you see in your child IEP, it is in alignment of what the present level should look like. The statement is also there to address the concern of the parent to enhance the education of our student. You know our involvement is very important. Our involvement, it is also dictated through IDEA. Parents are equal partner in the process, and that's one of the principles of, of IDEA. The present level should have the description of the student's social behavior and emotional skills. This is so important, and sometimes in the conversation we get shuffled and we overlook these things. What will make the student wholesome and functioning is to look into all the areas that are hindering the student to be successful. So the present level would help to determine the participation in state-wide assessment and participation in district-wide assessment. And we are kind of underlining the, the part. I believe that's what they have right now. Um, and we make sure that that present level will highlight where your child is and uh, where, where is their functioning. And when I say that, is to also negotiate. Is my child going to participate in the park, for example, because there are requirements. Years ago, when I used to negotiate for my child, it was the IAA, which is the Illinois Alternative Assessment. Now they call it the DLMA, which is the District Learning Something Assessment, uh, the Learning Measurement Assessment. That's the alternative. And I was insisting on her to take the ISAT. And they said, no, because of her IQ. And I was so confused. And I said, what the IQ has to do for my child to participate in the ISAT? They said, well, there, these are the requirements of the district. And I started understanding my right better. And I, I requested, is this a policy or a law? And they said, no, this is Chicago Public School policy. And sure enough, when I went back to, when I came to Family Resource Center to receive the services, they guided me to look into the information on the website at uh, Illinois State Board of Education, ISBE website. And sure enough, there was no requirement of the IQ to prevent my child to receive or to do the ISEC with the accommodation. We understand in, in the statewide assessment and district-wide assessment, there are no modifications. They cannot change the content of the test. They can only accommodate. And among those accommodations is extended time, breaks. They can give them, you know, a little uh, uh, break, uh, the stopwatch. That's what they call it. 
and um, I was I was very happy that I found out that I do not have to take uh, that answer from um, from the from the school, and I digged more and I understood my rights. So the present level will enhance the student participation in the general education curriculum. And it identified the student stress, strengths and weaknesses and needs related to the general education and program as well as other education and need. And I specifically highlight the social behavior and, and functional. The rest of the IEP will delineate the special education program services and accommodation goals and objectives to address the needs that is a result of the present level. So the present level can consider what the student can do in relation to the curriculum and age appropriate grade level. The example that I really use intensively is the third grade uh, level student. Johnny is in third grade and the third grade level curriculum dictates that the child, that the student have to read and have to do a book report. And uh, they have to make sure that they answer the WH question. And they have to do, a, um, they have to kind of do like mini reports, for example, when they read. Moreover, in the reading, there are many components. There is the reading decoding, there is the reading comprehension, there is the reading fluency. So in the present level, we have to go detail and dig deep deeper. Can the third grade level student have the same speed, which is the fluency, at his non-disabled peer? That's the comparison that we need to take in consideration when we talk about the present level. The decoding, can the third grade level Johnny decode, meaning read and dissect the word phonemically like his non-disabled peer. All of these things must be answered um, by the evaluation, observation, and um, the classroom testing. It's so important to gather that data from classroom testing. And I specifically stop at the classroom testing for just a minute because once the student is exposed to the general education curriculum, let's say we're talking about reading, we keep it at reading topic. They are exposed to read a passage. They will do all of those WH questions depending on your child functioning. Some of the kids, they do well with um, the multiple choice question. Some of the kids, they do well just with one question and they have to come up with the answer, but they should have certain accommodation and certain help to pull the, the answer. So, once we get that information, I really stop at that classroom assessment because they are exposed and the information is fresh in their minds and they will answer those questions. What does that tell me and what it gives me? It gives me also information on how my child retained the information. The rote memory, we have to also consider the learning style when we talk about present level. All of these are relevant information that we need to consider and look into it very detailed and deeply. When we talk about learning style, how my child can learn and retain the information. I know mine is 100% visual. If the information is not presented visually to her, there is no way that she can come up with an answer. She has to have the material in front of her on a piece of paper or electronic device. She needs to see it and read it. And also sometimes she needs a hands-on demonstration. So she's kinesthetic. She's a hands-on. So once we identify these little components, it helps us to learn more about her present level. Giving her those tools, knowing things about her. She's visual. She is a hands-on for certain things, specifically science. She needs a demo. Even for living, independent living skills, she needs a demonstration, folding clothes, for example. I have to do a demo, and then she will do it. So sometimes I even put my hand over her hand for, you know, detailed folding for independent living skills. And independent living skills is a present level into her transition plan. 
So don't take anything for granted. You have to kind of look into everything um, that will be relevant to your child. My relevance right now for the present level is the independent living skill into her transition plan. And I'll make sure that they have all kind of information so they can provide the right support for her. Um, the present level will tell us what the child can do now because if we think about the IEP, it tells us information about what the child can do now and how can we bridge the gap for them to advance for the next level. If we do in the IEP today, March 15, the present level should tell me what my child can do today and now and how can we advance her to the next level, which will be the 11th grade level, uh, grade level, which will be novel, hard work, uh, book report, algebra, and so forth and so forth. Uh, depending on how old your child, what grade they are, this information is so important that you look into it. I all the time advise the parent to look at two places in the IEP before anything. Look at the information about your child in the general consideration. All of the things that are related to the age, to the name, and um, anything pertaining to medical. And also I advise the parent to go directly to the present level. And after the present level, I advise them to look into the uh, goal. The reason be to see if there is an alignment because between the present level and the goal. Let's say the present level tell me that Johnny, the third grade level student, is able to read but does not comprehend what he is reading. And the goal, it says, Johnny will read and answer all WH questions. That is not a line because in the present level says he does not comprehend what he is reading. And the goal is to, to do all of those WH questions. We have, first of all, to give some steps right there to make sure that Johnny will comprehend what he is reading. So the present level consideration, how the child disability affects his involvement in the progress uh, and, the prog and progress in general education curriculum. This is so important because this also drives, to some extent, the LRE, the least restrictive environment or placement. The disability affects also is one of the components for the child to have an IEP. If the disability of adversely affects the child's disability, that then they are entitled and eligible to receive special education. That's why this component is so important. My child has autism, and I have known many children with autism who does not have IEPs because the autism, it is not affecting adversely their learning and access in general education curriculum, academically, functionally, behaviorally, and all of the above. Mine, it, it is affecting her comprehension and affecting also her social emotional. She's not able to to make friends, she's not able to engage in a conversation, she's not, she does not have no social cues at all. So that is the effect of my child and her involvement in general education. And when we say that, we have to also look at when we talk about a child who is most of the time in uh, smaller settings, the effect of the disability will be such like for my child when she goes to general education settings for a longer period of time because of that sensory, she get annoyed very quickly. And she started having a little tics and a little discomfort. So her involvement in the general education curriculum or general education settings, it is affected by the autism. Because she has that sensory overload, she cannot stay in those classes for a longer period of time. So we have to make sure that that information is it's accurate and it is stated clearly. The present level should include the strategies and the intervention that they will use to bridge the gaps and help the student to be successful, including the accommodation and modification. The accommodation is to access. It is a tool to access. The modification, it is a change 
or a tweak in the content of the curriculum. An example of accommodation, extended time, a cushion on the seat if they have a sensory, especially when you have small kiddos, they need, you know, those, those cushions to feel comfortable and be still. Away from distraction from windows and doors if they have attention spam issues. Um, some other accommodation is to ask the student to repeat instruction to ensure understanding. Um, there are many accommodations uh, that you can uh, check on our website through our resource page. Modification is when the curriculum is altered or shrunk to meet the unique need of the, the, the student. Like my daughter, she has a significantly modified curriculum because she gets overwhelmed easily. And also her understanding, like I said earlier, it is at the fifth grade level, even though she is in fifth, she is in tenth grade. So they shrink that curriculum down to where she can function and also be accurate. And the bottom line for all of this special education services is for the student to gain independence. So she can function independently at fifth grade level. Once we raise the bar a little higher, she will require and request assistance and sometimes the assistance is not available to her at home specifically I'm speaking at home so we said okay you can just do um, 15 questions versus 50 questions you can only do WH question pertaining to the what the who and the how and then just start on the why because the why is that's what is difficult for her because she cannot do inference in she cannot pull the information and transform it in her brain and give it back to you so these are the things that is a, a modification for her so the present level should include all of these strategies so it will be effective in helping the student to access and again make the progress in general education curriculum one of the things that I really want to make sure that the parent understand and the audience understand is the effect of the disability and the you know within the the within um, the involvement in the general education curriculum. So this statement, it is it in in the present level. If you look at your child's IEP, you will see it right after the standardized testing or the district-wide uh, test. And um, it, it should say, for mine, it says that so uh, the student cannot communicate properly and have high sensory issues. Her um, disability affects her to be in general education 100% of the time. And we understand that very clearly because in the beginning, as everybody have high expectation in their children, I had those high expectations of say she has to be in general education. We tried and it did not work because it was very clear that she couldn't stand the noise nor the pace of the work. She got so overwhelmed and anxiety started kicking in. And that was very early, you know, when she was exiting from early intervention going to early childhood. So that decision was made and we saw that she was able to function because in smaller settings the pace is a little slower and also the sensory was not too, um, it, it wasn't triggered uh, at that time. And uh, we, we were kind of negotiating to take some information from the effect of her disability and then that was redirected to look it up on IDEA website and also on ISB. So in your child's IEP, you should see in the present level the effect of the disability of your child on, um, on uh, being involved in general education. So there is no requirement and as to how many present level statements are included in the IEP. It depends on the student and on your child's needs. If your child has many needs, that means they will have many information about their present level. And we do not limit the present level only on academic. It is self-explaining present level of academic achievement and functional performance. And the functional performance are all the time as the social emotional, the behavioral component, because that's what makes the student a whole human being functioning in the school setting. 
So what is required is that the present level describe how the student is presently performing and functioning, including how the student disability is impacting their you know, involvement in uh, general education. Curriculum. So we have some guidelines on how to get that information and mainly the information it is from different from different uh, things and among those things is the three year evaluation. So the present level will address what is the Ms. child Peter? able to do? Yes. Yes, uh, do you mind if I interrupt? I actually had a, uh, some questions from uh, some of our parents. Is it okay if we ask them now? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, Myra, Rebecca, she asked, what if I disagree with what the school is stating is his present level of academic performance? If there are disagreements about the present level, that means she is not agreeing with their tools of evaluation. What is the source of that present level? Is it a three-year re-evaluation, initial evaluation, or classroom? assessment and standardized testing. Okay, so we'll give her um, a moment to respond. Yes, of course, of course. But uh, that's a great question. So, I mean, but in either situation, what would you suggest? I would suggest if there are disagreements about the present level, I would suggest that they can seek an independent evaluation at public expense to pull more information and to see different data. Is that or going to be an IEP or is it just, let's say, regularly during the school year? So, I mean, maybe it might be three years in. If it is the, the annual review and there are disagreements about the present level, that means that there are issues that had happened with the, with the goals. So the question will be, did my child achieve all of those goals? Because sometimes, and it depends on the measurement of those goals. Myra have to pay attention on the measurement of the previous goals, if it is an annual review. If it is a three-year re-evaluation and the present level is pulled from the information from the evaluation, she can request an independent evaluation at public expense to see what will be, you know, the other evaluator will, will say what is different. Okay. Okay, did um, I answer Myra's question? Um, we will find out shortly. Um, okay. And I also had a question from, uh, and I may uh, mispronounce your name, but I have uh, Lucia Cueto. Um, how often are we as parents allowed to request uh, the update to the present level? It is basically, it is basically with the annual review. We all know we can update the IEP and review it at any time of the year, and during that that update or review, if she needs more information about the present level, yes, she has the right to get that present level. But typically, the present level will go with the goal and the benchmark. And if there is a specific event that happened, God forbid, if something had happened, and I have an example where the student fell, and he has a traumatic brain injury, so his whole functioning had, had changed. So at that time, I, re I kind of guided the parent to request an evaluation so we would know what is the present level. And sure enough, there was a drop in his functioning. So if there are no changes, drastic changes, then I will look into the benchmark. And of course, I will say, did he achieve this benchmark? And what is now his functioning? And you can do it in writing, or you can do it through an annual uh, um, a review of the IEP. Did okay. I answer Lucia's question? Um, we will wait to find out. Uh, yes, you did. Okay. She just responded. So yes, she did. Great. Great. Right. No Thank problem. You, no problem. Are there any other questions to address before uh, I move on? Not at the moment. Okay, great. So the present level will say 
will identify where the student is now, including their unique strengths. And again, among those strengths is can read, can do math. Not Johnny is cute. Literally, it is a funny thing, but I've seen it. The preference and the needs, the parent and, and the parent's concerns is huge. Um, the interest. So the present level, literally, it is the baseline. We also have to take in consideration the student voice. Please, parents, make sure you ask your son or your daughter what do they like to do, what they want to do next year, what is fun for them to learn. These are important, relevant information that will make a whole lot of changes in the conversation. How the student has grown or changed from the previous IEP to now, what does that mean? It means, did my child achieve all of those goals or not? And identify also areas of educational need. That's the purpose of the present level uh, um, information is to identify the areas of educational need. That's why we, we have you know this webinar. In the present level, we must use clear, understandable language that all can understand. Let's say you are in Chicago and you move to Naperville, so the folks in Naperville should understand and have clarity on your child's uh, present level. We cannot use jargon. Avoid vague terms such as understand. He's a good student. Uh, the student misbehaves. That's, those are really vague, broad statements. It's not giving me enough information or detail. The present level should identify the support and accommodation that has been used successfully in the past. Are we going to use the same accommodation? If they've been successful and we withdraw, because the purpose of the IEP is to give the independence to the student, right? So if we give them those accommodation and they were successful and we will start taking them away slowly and steadily and see if they can function, we will keep that in mind. If we see that the student cannot function without these accommodations, then we have to leave them in the IEP. We have to be also with the present level, be specific and use data. Everything now is data driven. Present level, it is not an opinion. It is data, meaning that it is based on facts. And the facts, again, are the numbers coming from the evaluation, from the assessment, and all of the above. The present level should have a clear picture of your child. If you move again to another place, the teachers and the people on the other side of town, for example, should understand your child's weakness, strength, and how to provide the program to meet your child's unique needs. So there are a couple of questions when we say, what is the child is able to do? What are the areas of need? There are other questions in mind. What is my child learning style? If I need to know the present level, how is my child does he or she learn? There are many learning styles, and there is a learning style inventory that you can discuss with your school district. There is the visual. The one that I know I'm familiar with is visual, auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic. The visual is when we use pictures, material, read, to read material. Auditory, when they use their ears and listen to material. Tactile is hands-on. Kinesthetic is with the movement and demonstration. There are other questions that we need to, to consider with the present level. Can my child decode, comprehend? Can they retain the, the information? And that's the rote memory. Can they be creative? Can they listen and absorb the information? So all of these are things to, to think, questions to think about. So what is the student current independent learning level? When I say current independent, it is not the present level. It's a little bit different. When I say current independent, that the student is doing on their own without any support at all, not from parents, not from teacher, no accommodation, anything else that they are doing independently. I'll give you an example, a six-year-old in first grade, they will get the book, they will follow instruction of the, the teacher, open the book and page 16 start reading quietly. If the child do that, that's independent learning level functionally because he will follow the direction, open the book, and he was quietly reading. Now, if I look at the academic independent level, is he reading all the words 
And the comparison all the time, you have to keep in mind, is to compare them as to non-disabled peers. What does the child need in order to learn? So those are the accommodation and modification that need to be specifically said in the IEP. If the child is 14 and a half, what are the student's strength, need, and preference? Because that will be put in their transition. So these are key questions that we ask. Please don't freeze. My computer is freezing. I am so sorry. Try to get my computer to the next slide. Oops, I went too far. So what are the areas of need is the, the areas that the child has difficulty. So what type of relation on, on a social emotional, what type of relationship that the student have with his peer and an adult? How does the student interact with other peers? How does the student have difficulty meeting new people, making friends, keeping friends? All of these are things that we need to, to think about. How does the student feel about her or himself is so important. If your child is small in early um, elementary, ask them, do you like to go to school? Do you feel good going to school? If you say yes or no, that tells you that there is confidence and there is you know, a great self-esteem and it's a big deal. How does the student adjust socially to the school and community, especially if they are new? Does the child have physical limitation that impact their learning? If they have, you know, any physical limitation, we have to identify those needs and we have to bridge the gap. Are there any motor, sensory, or health development and concerns? Is the child getting fatigued? Do you have a question, Paula? I do have a question. Um, it's from Lucia Cueto. Uh, she, and you mentioned transition, and she wanted to, wanted to know, what do I have to pay attention and cover before eighth grade ends and the IEP is transferred to a different uh, district or transferred to a high school? So, you know, judging from his present level in high school, I mean, in the eighth grade, what should she be looking for as he advances to high school? Specifically and based on professional and personal experience is to look into his preference interest, strength, and when I say strength academically, is he good in reading? And if he is good in reading, look at the comprehension piece. It's a big, huge piece because it drives everything else. Also, what does he want to be? Ask your son or your child, what do you want to do in life? If they don't have the verbal ability, it should be a way to get that information from them. And um, I will definitely, if she's interested, I can um, touch base with Lucia and give her some good pointers from the transition point. And uh, for the present level, it, it should include all of these things, the preference, the strength, the, the interest. You have to link those things because if they have a preference to be an NBA player and physically they are not able, so we have to keep that as an interest and a preference, and we have to kind of deviate from the physical part of it and look for something that is pertaining to NBA activity, but it would not be physical, for example, because he may not be able to dribble a ball, run with the ball in the court, or something physically. I'm just giving you this example. And I hope I had addressed your, your question. You have to pay attention to their academic functioning, preference, Learning style, how your child learn, how they, they retain the information, that's so important because if you know it, you will share it with the team, and of course you will have really 50% of, uh, of your question. Um, so she has a follow-up question. So, um, so the question is, so do I need to ask for a meeting to review the present level and add his preferences, interests, learning styles, and strengths? Of course. And I am assuming, and I can be wrong, that you should have a transition meeting before he exits the eighth grade. And they should, the district staff should give you a questionnaire about your child, their learning style, their interests and strengths, and so forth and so forth. If they don't, make sure you request it. Also, they should have a transition 
evaluation or assessment. And that assessment, there is a portion that can be done in the school directly to your son, and there is also a portion, that questionnaire, that you will fill out and give them as an information. Um, Lucia, was this helpful? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, great. Agreed. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So I'm um, continuing with the question to think about for the present level. Is my son or my daughter get fatigued? This is a concern. If they get fatigued, they need an accommodation, a break. Are the results of the latest physical hearing and vision exams? Because if they reveal that my son or my daughter cannot see, then we have to have some accommodation. Does the student need daily organization of material? That's a functional skill. And sometimes we just skip all of these things, and they are so re relevant and helpful for us. Does the student require small group instruction or bigger, larger group instruction? That also is something that we need to think about. Does the student need preferential seating to have consistent room arrangement? And if that will help, you know, the student, do they need a consistent routine? Like my child, she needs a consistent routine. She's a routine-oriented child, and it works for her. Does the student require a peer professional to assist them? And that's the supplementary aid and, and uh, support and services. Does the student need assistance with extracurricular activities like PE, music, art, computer, and everything else? So the present level should come from the initial evaluation or the most recent evaluation. It also the result of the student performance on any state or district-wide assessment. Also, the, pre the present level come from the instructional implication of those evaluations. We read those evaluations. Please, parents, if you don't understand something in those evaluations, specifically the three-year evaluation from psychologists, there are numbers, there are guidelines that we are not familiar with it. Ask the specific question. Ask to interpret those numbers. What does it mean? What is 160% mean? What is low average comparing to whom and what age? When they give you the grade, the equivalent grade level, is this accurate? Is this a norm for all the testing? Because there are many tools. Is this implicated for all of them? Or is just this for this particular test? The present level should also highlight the intellectual functioning, the daily living skills, and this is Lucia's question, the adaptive skill, and this is Lucia's question, the rate of progress, how he progressed, the learning style, all of these are questions that you need to ask in, in preparation for the transition. The social development, the relation peer with adults and peer, the relationship with peers and adults, feeling about themselves, adjustment in the school, especially if they are new. The physical development, are they able and they have the stamina? And if they don't, then we need to highlight that in their present level. So it will. Anything in the present level, do know it drag and it brings services and support to your child. Management needs, and that's a functional skills. I've known many parents who came to us and they said, well, my child does not bring homework. Uh, we need to talk about functional skills. If that is a fact, it needs to be noted and highlighted in the present level. And what does that mean? It will provide an accommodation for the child to provide uh, support by having someone to, uh, to help the, the student by check-in, check-out system, for example. If the child has forgotten the homework, bringing the homework to the house and, or taking the homework from home, then someone has to check in and check out with the, with the child. We make sure also to involve them by doing a check mark. Okay, did you take your homework? Check this. Bring, did you bring your homework? Yes, check that. And that is a self-monitoring. We have to help the children by being involved, so that will help them, you know, to be more independent. The special consideration for the present level is the behavior, the limitation in English proficiency, and sometimes we forget these things in the conversation. We have to make sure 
if the child is not proficient in English, we have to make sure it is noted in the present level. The use of an instruction, communication needs, if there are language impairments, for example, and they're using a device, for example, that's assistive technology. We have to, to make sure all of those information are noted in the present level. And the reason I'm saying these things because, again, the present level is the foundation of the IEP. If the foundation is, is very skeptical and sketchy, we will not have a good IEP. The present level should summarize the current, current functioning through the standardized testing. We all know that the PARC last year was administered. I don't know if um, some of you have received um, the results. If you did not request it from your school and your district. Um, prioritize the, the present level, it prioritizes the need that will be addressing during the IEP. I will go back how the disability will impact the, level, the, the, the services. So how does the student perform independently and without support, comparing them to non-disabled peer? That will give me a lot of information on the impact of the disability. The present level should be a objective should be relevant information, not broad information. When appropriate, the present level must reference the student performance on district level benchmark and progress from the previous IEP. The present level should say if your child or the student had made the progress or not. The present level statement outlines strengths such as learning style, specific academic skills, because there are kiddos who are brilliant in different subject areas. I've known families that I've assisted their kids are brilliant in math, for example. That should be noted in math. But they cannot write a paragraph. It's OK, but I need that information. The reason I need that information so we can generate a goal to address those needs in, um, in writing, for example, skills. It also give about struggle of the child faces in the same areas. So the present level compliance versus best practice, it should address how the child disability affects their involvement, not leading to annual and leading to, and, and leading to a good goals and develop good goals and make sure that they are inclusive in, of content and standard of achievement. It is consistent with the evaluation. It is not a reiteration of the everything in the most current evaluation. We cannot, you know, just reiterate things that are from the evaluation, but it has to be consistent. So use the test as assessment that are criterion, reference, or curriculum-based measurement. In some school districts, they use the AIMS web. Here in Chicago, we use the curriculum-based me measurement. They call it the CDM. So it draws the information from teachers, educators. It draws the information from service providers. And we talk in present level across the board, even for speech, OT, physical therapy, nurse, social work. Every area has to have a present level that is relevant to that area. If you have a goal from a social worker before the goal, you have to have a present level on your child social emotional status. Are they able to make friends? Can they engage? Do they have coping skills? Can they adapt to change easily and quickly? Uh, all of those things. For communication, if you have a speech goal, um, can the child speak without a device? Are they able to hold a conversation without any support? Are they able to pronounce the word clearly and um, understood by everybody? So these are things that we need to take in consideration. The present level statement should answer what are the student's unique needs that result from the disability, how the needs are going to be addressed by accessing joint education curriculum and providing the right or the appropriate support, what are the parents' concerns, what instructional or behavioral support are going to be provided in the, in the future or the next year, what accommodation and modification are going to be provided? What instructional support and service will likely be supported and be and used by the student? So that is going to help the student to gain more independence. 
and what transition needs of the student must be addressed to prepare the student for the real world. So where does the present level data come from again? From evaluation, curriculum-based measurement, structured observation. I did this in purpose to bring up the observation. When we say structured, it has to be objective, not subjective. It cannot be an opinion. I'm seeing something, and in my opinion, the student is doing something. No, it has to be factual, based on fact. If I am getting information about behavior, I have to do a functional behavior assessment to provide the intervention. Work samples, student interview, all of these are tools that can be used uh, to <laughs> provide information. Yes, you have a question, Paula? I do. Uh, Lucia has a question regarding uh, the homework statement you made um, mm -hmm. a few moments ago, and I'll just read it. Uh, homework is an activity that takes place at home versus school, the, ed the education environment. If there is a lack of functioning skill to start, prioritize, continue without losing focus, and finish homework. It is common that the homework gets lost or is not delivered the next day. I will include this in the present level update. My question, how does the IP team approach the lack of the important skill that is, scroll down here, that is affecting his performance at school and, and grades if it is not taking place at school? The executive functioning goals that he has right now are just for improving the skills at school. But the homework, she's right, it is at home. And if he's not taking it to school, that shows to that team that there, is, there are problems. And they need to address it. There are functional needs that, that they have to tend to and, and address. By providing a goal specifically for the homework piece, and I have seen this very, very much so, especially for those who have attention deficit. They just give them, okay, check in, check out system. But check in, check out system has to be done accurately, appropriately, and it has to be also communicated to the parent. If your child is still in elementary, even at the high school level, if there are attention problems, they need to double check with the student and also with the parent. Did you receive the homework? And if he has an accommodation of extended time and he has one day extended, then that day, I would say, is he bringing his homework tomorrow to make sure that he will not get bad grades? Because I think in each school, they have grades for bringing in the homework. And some schools, they rely on the homework 50%. And even though he will do the homework, leaving it at home is not going to be good. So the present level should reflect that your child tends to forget homework at home or any project or assignment, however you want to word it. Yes, to answer your question, it should be noted in the present level. Was that helpful? Okay, she said thanks. Great. So the present level data come also from the parent observation, transcript, cumulative records. Please look at your child records before you go to those IEPs because it will give you a whole lot of information. Sometimes the record does not reflect the right information, so correct it. Um, it has the present level, it, it, it really encompasses all of the areas, the academic, the social, social, uh, the physical, and, and, and the functional. So the data should come from multiple sources, such as this wonderful question that I just got about the homework. But again, Prioritize. There are many things that we can tackle. Look at what are the areas that you need to address. Yes, independent living skills and functional skills, in my opinion, are priority, and I'm saying opinion. Um, the present level should include the progress that was made from the previous IEP to now, and identify all the accommodation. Use clear, clear uh, language. Uh, I will read, for example, a present level for a student. Um, Joey is in third grade. Joey spells at an early first grade level. He knows uh, that the sentences begin with a capital letter and end with a period, but has no other consistent use of uh, capital and punctuation. 
he is unable to write a complete uh, sentence. So what I got from this information is that Joey can spell at a first grade level. So it is identifying to me his present level. He knows sentences and all of that with the capitalization. So it tells me the strength he spells, but also it tells me the difficulty that he is unable to write complete sentences at all times. So we can we can rewrite um, the, the the present level and and make sure that we uh, we cover the strengths, the weaknesses, during, you know, in that present level. Um, I think we are done. I am open to more questions. Any questions? Um, I'm not seeing any at this time. I think that's pretty much it. I had extended the last slide. Okay. Well, um, I mean, at this point, we can close the webinar. And if you have any additional questions regarding special education or what uh, Sabita discussed, uh, present level of academic performance, please don't hesitate to contact Family Resource Center on Disabilities at 312-939-3513. Thank you. Thank and have you a so much. Thank you, Zabita. You are welcome. Bye-bye.